Welcome back in everyone. Third video of the day. Well, we already covered the offense. We covered the defense. Now we're talking about just big picture money. This is something I cover a lot in the off season, but I, I, I thought I wanted to cover it here a little bit in the regular season just because it, it's pertinent. One of the things that, that keeps popping up here, uh, we're seeing the defense struggle and we're seeing fans ask, and rightfully so, why, why, why didn't we upgrade at defensive end? We knew that was a little thin. Why didn't we grade at defensive, upgrade at defensive back? We knew that was a little thin. And, and the answer quite simply is money and priorities, okay? Heading into the off season, you had a lot of problems that you needed needed to upgrade on. Linebacker was by far the weakest uh, of, of group of, of the whole thing. Offensive line after the Super Bowl debacle was a situation that absolutely had to be addressed, especially knowing that Patrick Mahomes is the most valuable asset you have on the team. You've got to protect that. Defensive end was thin. Everybody knew it. Defensive back had some talent mixed in, but yeah, it was a little thin. Everybody knew it. It, this is the this is the way the NFL money game works. We're talking about Kansas City, but it's true for everybody. And I, you know, I've, I've covered this extensively for for teams like the Saints and the Packers, and you know, the list just goes on and on over the years. The Steelers, uh, et cetera, et cetera. When your quarterback, just your quarterback, and in the Chiefs' case, Patrick Mahomes last year or this year. Uh, making $25 million, I think, before they restructured. I don't think they restructured him. That, he's not making that right now. But his cap number before they restructured this year was $25 million. If just your quarterback is making an inordinate amount of money in the NFL, and Patrick Mahomes' number is going to keep going up every single year, it's going to skyrocket to $35 million and then $40 million and then forty five. I think it up, ends up right around $50 million per season, uh, by, by the time you get toward the end of that contract, maybe year eight or nine, it's right up around 50. It goes up very quickly. When your quarterback, forget the other positions on the team, when just your quarterback is making that kind of money, that affects your depth. And this is what happens, okay? You just don't have as much money. You don't have it. You don't have as much money to invest in other starters, and you certainly don't have as much money to invest in your backups. And the NFL, above any other sport, is the sport that you know the injuries are coming. And when they come, somebody's got to go in and play. And if you've got extra money because your quarterback is on a rookie contract, then you can invest that money into having, say, a veteran linebacker at $5 million come in as a backup and play and produce and be competitive at least. Certainly not dominate, but be competitive. And you have that kind of money to invest throughout the roster. And I think that's a smart way to go, no matter who you've got playing at quarterback. And that's just at the quarterback. Now, a lot of NFL teams, the Eagles, the Saints, the Steelers, uh, the list goes on and on. I, I don't have them all right in front of me right now. A lot of NFL teams, once they draft a good group of players, they don't want those players to go. And they'll have 10, 12 players that they think they can't live without, can't win without. And they'll have all their money tied up in those players. Now, the Chiefs haven't been that bad, but the Chiefs are off in that direction. <coughs> Excuse me, that direction. They're off at that end of the spectrum. This is this year's cap numbers. Uh, Patrick Mahomes, before they restructured him, would have been at 25. Uh, Frank Clark, they didn't restructure him. His number is $26 million. Chris Jones, they restructured him, but before they did, his number would have been 29. Joe Tooney. Uh, only making $5 million this year, but next year it scoots all the way up to 18. Uh, Tyreek Hill, $16 million this season. They didn't, he didn't allow them to restructure him. Travis Kelsey, before they restructured him, would have been making 13. Tyron Matthew, $20 million. Orlando Brown's only making $3 million this year, but if, if he plays next year, he's not going to play for three. Even as bad as he's playing, He's not going to want to play for $3 million. He's going to be asking for a whole heck of a lot more, even as much as he's struggling. And Anthony Hitchens making $11 million this year. They didn't restructure him this year. They restructured him the year before. These nine players right here, before they restructured some stuff, and restructuring just means you borrow from future seasons. Okay, that's all that means. You're not creating new money. You're just borrowing from 2022 and 2023 and putting more of a burden on those caps. But before they restructured, these nine players right here were slated to make $148 million out of a salary cap that was going to be 183. 
And, and what that does is, again, if just your quarterback, only your quarterback, is making more money than the average rookie quarterback, and, and Mahomes is by a long shot, that already puts you at a financial disadvantage. Already. The more money you invest in the other good players, you say, hey, we don't want to let go of Kelsey, and we don't want to let go of Hill, and we couldn't let go of Hitchens because of the way the contract was structured, and we couldn't let go of Clark because of the way the contract was structured, and we don't want to let go of Jones, and we don't want to let go of Matthew. When you keep all these players, you still have this great core group, but now your depth, which is it's a meaningless word until you start working your way through the NFL season and Ward goes down and uh, Thornhill has got some kind of an issue and Willie Gay goes down and Chris Jones goes down and Frank Clark goes down and you start to realize, well, the best players are going down because they're on the field more often. They're more likely to get hurt. Who's up next? Next man up. Well, the next man up is Sorensen and the next man up is Snead and the next man up is Hughes and Baker and whoever you plug in at defensive tackle or defensive end. I mean, those are the guys, okay? And the depth just isn't there, and it can't be. It can't be, especially, especially when you've traded away a lot of your draft picks for Frank Clark and for Orlando Brown. So it, it's a vicious cycle. It's the way the NFL works. But Kansas City doesn't have to play that way if they don't want to. In the years that come ahead, if they want to, to battle back some of that financial disadvantage that comes from having Mahomes making so much money, I, I my personal advice is, and I've advised this for three years now, even before they got into this, is to keep your draft picks, quit trading them away for players like Frank Clark and Orlando Brown. And it's easy to pick on those deals because they haven't worked out yet. But I, I, you know, they need to they need to start trading for more draft picks, even in the lower rounds, instead of trading them away. But also quit handing out so much money. All right, some of these players you're just gonna have to play without, and it would hurt. It would hurt to be without some of these players. Now, not gonna miss Hitchens too awful much, and 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 you know some of these other guys, Frank Clark, when when he's gone, probably not gonna miss that production too awfully much. But these other players hurt, and the way to make up for that is. You have more solid starters at other positions, like defensive back, like defensive end, and you have better backups coming in because you have more draft picks, okay? You're drafting in the fifth and sixth round instead of grabbing street free agents and, and using them as backups, okay? It's just the better way to build a team, and most NFL teams don't do that. Kansas City isn't as far down that road of, of restructuring and and big cap numbers as the Eagles and the Steelers and the Saints have gone, okay? But they are in that direction, and it's not a direction that I personally would choose, and that's what you're seeing this year. I really didn't think it would kick in this year. I thought this would kick in in 2022 when the Mahomes contract grew even more, but it's here, all right? These struggles, you don't have draft picks to build depth. You have so much money tied up in nine players or eight players or whatever the number is, that you just cannot field a football team the way you need to. And so then teams like the Bills, rookie contract, teams like the Chargers, rookie contract, teams like the Ravens, rookie contract, teams like the Browns, rookie contract, <laughs> they're all better than you because they have a quarterback who may not be as good as yours, but he's somewhere in the competitive winning realm. He's good enough to move the football up and down the field. He's good enough in some cases like Lamar Jackson or Herbert to – win MVP awards, they're good enough to compete on, with you on the scoreboard, and they have more draft picks, and they're drafting in a better spot than you, and they don't have all their money tied up in as fewer players. Their cap space is spread out evenly throughout the roster. It's spread out horizontally throughout all the starters, and it's spread out vertically in the depth chart, reaching down to their backups, and, and that's the difference, okay? Even if injuries start happening to these other teams, like the Browns, like the Chargers, like the whoever's, they're better prepared to absorb those injuries as a body, if you will. They're just better able to absorb those injuries than Kansas City. When Chris Jones goes down with an injury and doesn't play for two or three games, that's $29 million for the restructuring. That's off on the sidelines. That's $29 million that you don't have. And I, I think they should keep Chris Jones, but... 
So the other players, you got to make these tough choices. And if you don't, if you keep all your money tied up in these players right here, and it'll be a slightly different group next year. Tooney's number will grow. Uh, Mahomes' number will grow. Orlando Brown, if you keep him, his number will grow to what? I don't know. It might be 8 or $9 million instead of the 17 he might have been looking for. But if you keep him, his number's going to grow. If, if you keep all of these players, this group, this core group, that's the phrase you keep hearing toss around, and your money's all tied up there, it forces you to then make choices between these groups every offseason. Not just this offseason, but every single offseason you have to make choices. Well, this offseason they decided to fix the offensive line and the linebacking group. If they'd, have, if they'd have fixed defensive end, then the linebackers would be even worse. You wouldn't have Bolton. If you'd have fixed defensive back, then you still would have had struggles here at defensive end and offensive line. You, gotta, you had to fix offensive line. You can't fix everything. All right, there is absolutely, positively, no way to fix all of these groups every offseason when you're short on draft picks, when you're drafting down at the end of, of the line in, in the first round, and when you have so much money tied up here in these nine players. So my advice moving forward is the same as that it has been for three years now with these NFL teams, and in this case, Kansas City. You need to start letting some of these players go. We know about Hitchens and, uh, and, and Clark probably already gone. That's, uh, that's kind of a given. But the, 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 the uh, proper choice after that is not to bring in another high-priced high player from free agency. Okay, I don't care who the player is or how good they are. I, I don't care who they are. If you bring in another guy in free agency who's making $15 million or $20 million a season, you still have the same problem. You still have the depth problem, okay? And you can't get around that, all right? When you invest this much money in these players, so, you know, when you let go of Hitchens and, and you let go of Clark and you maybe decide to let go of somebody else, it's going to hurt, but your depth will be better. Even then, even then, I, I throw this in here right at the end, even then, even if they start tilting back financially to more responsible areas, and they don't trade away more draft picks for, for players. Even then, it's still always going to be an uphill battle for any team, any NFL team, who has a player, a quarterback, on a high-dollar contract when you've got these other teams bringing in these newer quarterbacks who may not be as good as Mahomes necessarily. We could argue that point. But if they're good enough to move the football up and down the field and they're making $3 million a season – they can take that other money that you're spending at quarterback, and they can spread it all throughout the roster. So even then, it's still going to be a challenge for Kansas City over the next few years. But that's the direction they need to go back towards, okay? They need to get more draft picks, not less, even if they're fifth and sixth rounders. And they need to build their depth and build their quality starters by not investing so much money in these players here, okay? And that's really the only way to, to be more competitive. And again, that's not going to guarantee you Super Bowl victories, but I think that's going to get you back more in the direction of competing with these quarterbacks on rookie contracts instead of what's happening right now this year. You're at two and three, and, and you're almost right there in desperation mode, okay? All right, thank you so much for listening. We will see you next week, hopefully. Hope you have a great weekend. Bye.